Well, with the holidays well and truly in the rearview mirror, it's time for me to get back to my roots and make a list that's sure to piss off a lot of people, even though I'm not going to say anything particularly shocking or upsetting. Oh well, let's start the new year off right and arm you with the knowledge you need to spend the next four months of cold weather browsing the classified ads looking for your next motorcycle. Because let's face it, you've been procrastinating taking down the Christmas tree and spending your weekends longingly thumbing through all those Craigslist ads. Don't worry, I do the same thing, except I took my tree down last weekend because I'm not an animal. Anyway, this list is going to cover the most reliable motorcycles you can purchase from an owner on Craigslist. Now that means no dealerships because basically all dealer bikes are good to go and even if they're not, you can go back and slap someone around until they fix it. Buying a used bike from an owner can be a little bit more intimidating because you don't have that dealer guarantee and who knows what sort of life that little Ninja 250 has led and when the last oil change was done. When you purchase one of the bikes on this list, you can rest easy knowing that they're not going to leave you stranded a mile down the road with a $5,000 hole in your wallet and waiting for a buddy with a tow truck. But you know what the most reliable appliance you can purchase and rev to the moon and not worry about it blowing up on you? Yep, you guessed that right. It's the Lawn Mower 3.0, the world's best ball shaver, which will defoliate your pube forest faster than you can say Turbo Busa. Okay, now let's see the Manscaped bingo card here. We've got a ball shaver reference, shoehorn Busa reference, someone shouting about the state of the viewer's scraggly pubes, and a free space. Hmm, we can do better. If you want to get the Lawn Mower 3.0, the best way to do it is get the performance package, which includes all the ball soaps and deodorants to minimize your gooch juice. Oh, there's another one. The Shears 2.0 to clean and trim your nails, and the Weed Whacker to trim your nose and ear hair so you don't look like some filthy cave dweller. And that makes Manscaped bingo. You also get the Shed Travel Bag to hold all this good stuff, and the special anti-chafing boxers to lovingly cradle your freshly shorn manhood. Click the link below and use the code YAMMY for 20% off your o- almost said off your odor. Nope, it's not off your odor. Click the link down below and use the code YAMMY for 20% off your order. Your balls will thank you. Now let's start off this list with the low-hanging fruit. And no, that's not another Manscaped joke. It's any fuel-injected Honda. If you want to purchase a used motorcycle and you're nervous about it being some crusty nugget that won't last a week, then just buy a Honda. Even if it is a crusty nugget, you can rest assured that it'll just turn over and run every time you want to ride. Honda is one of the most reliable manufacturers, period regardless of whether it's motorcycles and cars, as rated by anyone who rates reliability. We made a list two years ago about the most reliable brands, and Honda had a 12% probability of needing some sort of major repair due to mechanical failure, and when you consider the volume of bikes that they produce, that's basically a rounding error. Anecdotally, I've owned two different used Hondas, and the VFR was a completely bulletproof bike, and the Hornet's only major issue was a common problem so well documented in the forums that it might as well have been considered considered regular maintenance. Now I'm not just talking dad bikes here, but cruisers, super sports, dual sports, ADVs, scooters, anything with a Honda badge on it, you can guarantee it's going to run forever, and you basically just need to change the oil. Obviously you should be doing all the other service items, but if the previous owner skipped a few items here and there, you're not going to have to worry about the bike seizing up on you. It might not be the most thrilling motorcycle out there, but a Honda will get you where you need to go, rain or shine. Number 6 goes to basically any beginner sport bike. We're talking R3, Ninja 300 or 400, Jixxer 250, CBR 300R, and all of their naked variants. These bikes are basically all unkillable, and trust me, we've tried. You'll see later this week. But what makes these bikes so bulletproof? Well, two things. They're not performance-oriented motorcycles, meaning they feature lower compression ratios and lower states of tune, which puts less stress on the engine, transmission, sprockets, basically the whole bike. Secondly, they're owned by beginner riders for the most part. They bought one of these bikes to learn how to ride, maybe take it to a track day, maybe pop a few wheelies here and there, but for the most part they see very conservative miles. They're typically not beaten up on, and any crash damage you see on these bikes is usually the result of some slow speed or parking lot drops, which all of these bikes can shrug off no problem. It doesn't matter if you're buying one of these bikes from their first owner or the 15th, it's just gonna work. However, while you might not find any major mechanical issues with a used beginner sport bike, chances are you're gonna find some atrocious mods. We're talking eBay levers, grips, foot pegs, lights, exhaust, the works. If you're willing to suffer some jankiness, you can leave those mods on there, but if it were up to me, I'd slowly return the bike to its stock form for as much as possible. Not only will it make the bike worth more money when you inevitably 
sell it, but the stock parts work better than any eBay or Amazon crap part. Number five goes to the Royal Enfield Bullet. Whoa, Royal Enfield on the channel and Yam's not absolutely dunking on it? 2021 must really be different. Well, before you get too excited, let me say that it's not a good motorcycle. It's slow, it's heavy, it's old, it's outdated, but Royal Enfield's been pumping these out for the better part of 70 years at this point, and they've managed to make a motorcycle that can trundle along an American highway and the Indian-Pakistani border at the same time. Fun fact, the bullet was actually meant to patrol along that Indian border the more you know. You can get it in a 350 and a 500, but let's face it, ain't no American buyer going for a smaller engine when you could have 150 extra cc's to flex with. And that 500 is putting down 27 horsepower and 30 foot-pounds of torque out of its single-cylinder engine, which, if you're following along at home, is only slightly faster than a Jixxer 250. That's real bad. But admittedly, the bike is as simple as it gets. It's air-cooled, it's got a Kickstarter for when your electric start doesn't work, and there's so many of these bikes in circulation that solving the issues on it can be a simple matter of going to your local hardware store, purchasing a hammer, and then smacking the bike with it. If you want an old-school bike with no redeeming qualities, this is it. But come on, my dude, you can do better. In fact, number four is basically a big old middle finger to the bullet, the Triumph Bonneville. You can get a used Bonnie basically anywhere in the world, and as long as they're from the later 2010s, pretty much every secondhand Bonnie is going to be a great choice for the rider who just wants to play pretend at being a cafe racer. That is to say, you get all that hipster cred from non-riders, and all the CB750 cafe racer boys just wish they'd bought a Bonneville as they endeavor to sink their carburetors again this month. The main thing to keep in mind when you take a test ride is the transmission. Don't just take a quick spin around the block, but really romp on it in all gears. Rev match downshifts and test the one-two shift really well because anecdotally, most of the issues with the Bonneville platform stem from the transmission. If everything feels okay, you're going to be fine, because trust me, you don't have to be an expert mechanic to feel a transmission issue. One of the great things about choosing a Bonneville is that Triumph has made an entire family of motorcycles out of it. You can get a Scrambler, a Sporty Thruxton, a Cruiser, a Standard, whatever style you want. You can get it with a Bonnie and have the pleasure of being accosted by boomers at a gas station who had one just like it back in the 70s. But while we're on the topic of classics that boomers love, number three goes to a Harley Davidson Sportster. Basically, any Sportster will be fine, but it is worth pointing out that 883s pop up on Craigslist way more often, as people buy them as a beginner cruiser and almost immediately regret it unless they're super into the Sportster life. There are three things in this world you can count on. Death, taxes, and an Evo motor. They might not make much power, they might vibrate your fillings loose, but they are a very dependable power plant. Just maybe carry an extra quart of oil when you go out for a ride. In Austin, you can't swing a stick without hitting someone trying to sell a Sportster, and since it's a buyer's market, let me give you some advice. Pick the most lightly modified Sportster you can find, stock if possible, because there's no guarantee that the wrenching was done with any real level of care. Sure, the owner might have the service manual floating around, but that doesn't mean that they can read. Look for mods that can be easily taken off or put back to stock, so that means no engine work, including cam timing or valve work, unless they can prove that it has been looked at by a mechanic and dyno tuned. If you're looking to save a little bit of cash, you can grab a pre-07 model with carbs. I've been told by Harley simps across the internet that carbs on Harleys are really easy to work on, but I think it's just Stockholm Syndrome talking. Do yourself a favor and just stick with the FI bikes. Now before we get into our top two, I wanted to shout out a couple of honorable mentions. Bikes that we've either talked about ad nauseum or can be a bit tough to find. This includes the great and mighty Hayabusa, which if you can get one owned by a Hayabusa man, it will literally never die. The FZ1 is another bike that just keeps going and going, but they're harder and harder to find these days. Also, if you're looking to go off-road, dual sports are typically owned by older riders who actually know how to take care of their motorcycles. Lastly, a step through scooter is a really viable option. It might sound stupid, but if all you want to do is get around town on a grocery getter, it's cheap, indestructible, and actually really practical. 
Number two on this list goes to the WR250R. Now, I know I gave dual sports in general an honorable mention just a second ago, so why is the WR worthy of an entry all to itself? Here's the thing about used WRs. They're highly sought after dual sports since they're light, fuel injected, and have long service intervals. And unfortunately, owners know that, so a used WR250 might be $1,000 cheaper than a brand new one, especially in places like Texas where dual sport riders don't sell bikes like the WR250. WR250 all that often. If you get extra lucky, you might be able to scrounge up a WR250X, which is the Supermoto variant, which featured all the same goodness of the Dual Sport, but it had 17-inch wheels so you could put Super Sport rubber on it and take it to a track, or knobbies and take it to the trail. Admittedly, the WR250R did just get the axe from old daddy Yamaha, but they've made about a million billion of them, so they're very cheap to maintain with a breadth of aftermarket support, from big bore kits to sumo conversions. If you want a bike that can do it all, the WR is a great choice, again, assuming you can find one. Lastly, the number one most reliable motorcycle that you can find on Craigslist goes to a bike that you're probably not expecting. The Ducati Penigale. Basically, any Penigale will do, but I'm thinking more like the 959 and 955. But why? Why would you ever want to purchase a secondhand pasta rocket from some schlub who might have never even done the Desmo service? For one reason and one reason alone, the owner is scared of the bike. Every time I've seen a Penigale on Craigslist, they're going for a few grand off brand new with super low miles and the caption, I don't ride that much anymore. This is code for I'm a 30 something new rider with more disposable income than cents and I ran out and purchased a rolling status symbol because I wanted to impress the ladies at the bar, but when I got on it, the world went full plaid and I noped out. If you want to put this to the test, take a look at your local Craigslist and if you see a Penigale on there, check for signs of tire wear, look at the mileage and the state of things like the grips in the seat. I bet you they look pristine and that's because they are. It's basically brand new and I'd also wager it's probably still under warranty. If you want to go fast and flex on all your buddies, pick up a used Penigale and rest easy knowing that it's probably just a couple of hundred miles past the break-in. Fact, in 2017, two groups of undercover cops attempted to arrest each other in a drug sting. One side posed as the buyers and one side posed as the sellers and they got into a fist fight trying to arrest each other. Goodbye. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yammy Noob video, but I tell you what, there's another Yammy Noob video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you, so why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.